Hey guys, this is Jen and I have such a super special guest today. This is Ben's mom. It's my mother-in-law. This is Donna. She is the most stunning woman and she said that she would be down to do a video with me because I've been wanting for the longest time to do a tutorial sharing how I apply makeup if you have a little bit more mature skin. Older skin. I feel like there are a few different tricks that especially women in your generation might not have done because makeup technology has changed so much over the years. It has. There are much different products and also some of the trends of makeup nowadays is very different than what it was. They're better. Five or 10 years ago. <laughs> or 25 When or you <laughs> first started doing your own makeup. A long time ago. So we want to bring your makeup into the current day and age and make you look so much fresher and more youthful as this look right here is. You look so beautiful and amazing and I cannot wait to share you guys this tutorial. So I really hope you guys <laughs> enjoy watching. If you want to see this look, stay tuned. We are going to hop right into it. So we're going to start off priming her skin, which is a very important step, whether you have more mature skin or younger skin. I find that it just helps your makeup smooth on way better, but especially if you have more mature skin, this step really helps fill in any fine lines, wrinkles, a lot of those textures elements that come into play when your skin does get a little bit more mature. So I'm using the Smashbox Photo Finish Foundation Primer. This is a silicone based primer so it's really good filling in any little texture going on. Okay. So this is just a clear product and it feels very soft going on but I think people who never used foundation primer and then try it are actually quite surprised at what a big difference it makes. Okay. Yeah, so it just gives a more youthful look. It kind of makes you look a little more airbrushed, a little more blurred. I need that. Photoshop in real life. <laughs> <laughs> I want that. Now we're moving on to an eyeshadow primer. I like using this especially on mature skin because as you age, age <laughs> sometimes the skin on your eyelids gets a little more crepier and it will rub on itself, which is very similar to actually a lot of Asian eyelids that have a very small crease. The reason we can't use certain products is because we'll just have those products rub from the oils on your eyes and it'll just get everywhere, which is why you mentioned when you use your pencil, eyeliners, it just smudges off by the end of the yes, day. It does. This will help set the base for that. I'm using okay. the Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion. This is the anti-aging version. Which I need. So with this, you really want to make sure you get in all of the little nooks and crannies. <clears throat> so you can just gently lift up your eyelid as you go around to get in all of the lid space. So sometimes it's not just a simple sweep. You really want to make sure it covers the entire surface of the skin. Okay, so now let's do foundation. Yay. Today I'm using Dior Forever Skin Glow in your shade 1N. I like this one because it has some oils in it and it has some hydrating elements, but it's not overly greasy or shiny looking. Okay. But the extra oils will help hydrate more mature skin. What does the M stand for? It means neutral. neutral. So okay. if you're not particularly yellow or a really pink undertone, somewhere okay. in the middle, okay. it works really well. And then this, I don't know if you use a sponge to blend in no. your makeup. So what I like doing is using this little foundation sponge and then I wet it with water. See? feel it. it's a little damp mm -hmm. and that will help so that the sponge doesn't absorb as much product but it also blends in okay. softer. I'm going to just dot this on your face here yeah. and there and whether somebody else is doing your makeup or yourself make sure you have very clean freshly washed hands just so you don't have any bacteria from any of your products or hands getting anywhere. So then once it's all around your face I just like taking the sponge and then blending it in. Women who have gained in <laughs> a lot of wisdom from many years or known as of aged. life. <laughs> I actually like going lighter on the foundation. I don't think it looks very flattering to have a cakey appearance. No, it doesn't. It's not flattering at yeah. all. Yeah, so I actually really like just having a lighter wash, like a more natural looking finish. I don't think the point is to do like a full glam kind of look. I mean, there's a time and place for that, but I think for the most 
apart. You just wanna look really nice and pulled together from day to day. We're gonna start off with having more of the coverage closer to the middle of the face and then blend it outward to the edges. That should avoid having any sort of like harsh foundation lines, having too many problems with blending into like the hairline or other places. I'm just bouncing this to blend everything together. So I'm starting off by just doing sort of an even coverage all over your face. I like doing half pumps because I feel like I have more control if I start with less product. So I'm doing another little half pump and then I'm going to go into, again, like mainly the center part of your face, okay. just where I feel like I want a little bit more coverage. Okay. I'm also going to do a really sheer wash of the foundation on your eyelids just to have an even base. I didn't think um, about ever doing that. Well, it's a tip that will help save some steps when you apply eyeshadow because it also gives it a little bit of a base to stick to and have kind of even color. Mm. I mean, this isn't a necessary step, but it does help cover up any mm -hmm. sort of little like mm -hmm. veins and stuff that might mm -hmm. be on the eyelids. Gives a little bit more of an even appearance. So now we're going to move on to concealer. I'm using the Smashbox Studio Skin 24 Hour Concealer. I chose one that has a little bit of peach undertones because especially if you have fairer skin, some of the under eye circles tend to be more on the blue, purpley side. Mm -hmm. and they do. You yes. are familiar with that. And peach in the color wheel counteracts those bluey purpley shades. Okay. So we're gonna focus this mainly on your under eyes, but okay. a little bit melasma spots, sunspots, or veins here and there. Okay. You really don't have very much you need to cover though. We're going to do just a little bitty triangle shape. But I really don't think this needs to be very heavy duty. I like putting this down a little bit down this whole center of the nose because it just guides your eye on where to look. Mm. You can also add some highlight right here mm. in the center of your chin. It's like doing a highlight with a highlighter, but you're really just using concealer. Oh, good to know. Concealers are going to be giving you a matte highlight, which is going to be more flattering if you do have uneven skin texture. I just find that shimmery powders for highlighting get caught in a lot of fine lines and wrinkles and pores. So as you age it doesn't necessarily look as flattering right. to try to like look like a disco ball no i try to just do the highlighting in the concealer step and again with this we're just going to bounce the same beauty blender into your skin i don't go all the way up to my lash line here because there are a lot of fine lines and i find that it gets caught mm -hmm. in those sometimes so feel free to really get in to the different parts of the skin. You can even push this around a little bit so that everything is nice and covered. And we're gonna want to set that right away. With a lot of those kinds of creamy products, they like to dry in the cracks and crevices. And unless you set it right away with some powder, it can I didn't know that. look really creasy. You know, when you get like a line of concealer? Oh yes. So what I'm doing with the brush is I'm brushing it outward, but I'm also brushing it in Word because I want to make sure I cover all of those parts. Oh, I also wanted to mention the powder I'm using is the By Terry Hyaluronic Hydra Powder. This one has hyaluronic particles in it, I guess. You said that right. It draws in moisture toward the skin from out in the environment. If you do have drier skin, it works really, really well. And I also find this is a very soft, translucent setting powder. I'm really just going to set this toward the center of the face. I don't want to go all the way out because we do want to have a little bit of luminescence still in your skin. Mm -hmm. Next I'm going to move on to eyeshadow. Yay. So for women, obviously you can rock whatever shades you want to at any age if you have the confidence. However, I would say as we age, I think it's always going to look more classic to go sticking to a neutral palette because then the focus will be more about you and your beauty and less about the color on your eyeshadows. Mm -hmm. Like do you want people to draw attention to your eyes? for your eyelid, you know? Right. I mean, I prefer neutral colors anyway, so I'm using the Urban Decay Naked Reloaded. I do find more women from the older generation are sometimes drawn to more grayish brown tones and taupey browns, but I find that those aren't as flattering and youthful because sometimes they turn a little gray on the skin, and if you think about lively skin, gray just is 
isn't the color that necessarily draws out your best yeah. features. So I like sticking to warm browns because I feel like it does make you look a little more healthy and younger. So I'm, I'm going all for to, that. <laughs> I'm going to start off with a transitional shade. We're really not gonna do much on the eyeshadow. Okay. Do you want something a little more orangey or something a little more neutral brown? Well, what I would have never thought today? to try this one. Really? Yeah. Okay, well, that's what that. I'm wearing on my eyes today. Well, what a great choice. Okay, so we'll go with that one. This is just a neutral warm brown shade. It's sort of like a medium, almost orangey. It's called Boundaries. So I'm taking this on the round fluffy blending brush. Mm -hmm. And then what we're going to do is, I know this sounds a little weird, but I'm gonna lift your brow skin up so okay. that I'll have as flat an area as possible. Let's okay. turn you to the side. I wanna make sure to go in the flat lid areas and I'm just going to do almost like a C shape. And then I'm gonna let the skin fall down and then do it again so that I really get all of the different areas around mm -hmm. where the skin is. The main focus is going to be this eye socket. I'm gonna just sweep this into the eye socket. We're going about two thirds of the way in, but we're really not going to go far outside of that little pocket. So we have the dark color on the outer part of the eyelid, and then we're gonna go with a lighter color on the inner part of the eyelid there. We have some shimmery shades, which we could do, but I'm going to start off with doing this light matte shade. It's kind of almost like a satiny matte. This is really going to brighten up the eyes, which I really like. So I'm gonna do this on the main little ball of your eyelid and the inner third. I'm just gonna pat this all over, and then I'm gonna do that trick before where I lift up the skin and really get in all of the different moving parts of the eyelid skin. That way, no matter how your eyelid is blinking, you're still gonna get full, even eyeshadow coverage. It's a matter of making sure to move the brush around in sort of all directions. I'm also going to use this shade right here on your brow bone, and that is going to open up your eyes, make them look a little bit bigger, because this is where the light would naturally hit your face, is on that brow bone that sticks forward. Okay. So if you use a lighter color, it'll open that up. Okay. You can leave it nice and light like this one for just a day-to-day -day look. But I'm gonna add just the same color, go over it right in the crease one more time, and it just adds a little more depth of color. So it gives you a little daytime smoky glam. I need that. Looks good. I would have not chosen that color. I'm going to move on to some eyeliner. You use mainly pencil eyeliners, right? right? So we're going to start off with that since it's more comfortable for you. I'm using the Makeup Forever Aqua XL Pencil. It's just a brown shade. So we're going to start from the outer corners and work our way in, but I'm really going to try to stick very close to the lash line. I'm trying to make it a pretty thin line and it's gonna be thicker as we go outer and then I'm really going to stop even just like a third of the way in before it goes all the way in. Really gonna try to go pretty close to the lash line here. And then instead of just like making the perfect line, I'm actually gonna take a pencil with some dark brown eyeshadow on it and I'm going to smudge this so that I have a little bit more control of how that eyeliner sort of lays. And the eyeshadow also sets the product so that it's not gonna smudge as much. So just lift your eyelid skin up and then work from the outer parts. And I'm taking this dark brown eyeshadow right here on this really flat, short brush. And I'm going to smudge that. So now we're gonna add some more pencil eyeliner. She likes doing her lower lash line. I'm really only going to put this not even past halfway in. And again, we're going to have more of the volume of this closer to the outer corners and then less as we get in. Okay, so look up, look, look down. up. You have a beautiful curtain rod. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm really even only just applying this at the outer third of your eye. I really don't want this to go too far in. So I'm doing the same trick where I take the eyeshadow on that same brush and I'm going to smudge this from the outer corner in just so that it fades as it goes inward. I've never done that. I'm looking forward to trying that. Next we're going to move on to liquid eyeliner and I know you've had some fears about using a liquid eyeliner. Yes. Since you're already 
piece of the pencil, we did the pencil, and I'm just going to add a little cat eye flick to the ends of your eyes so that it's a little bit less intimidating, but it'll still give you that next level pulled together classy lady look. I'll take it. Okay, and I am sticking with a brown because the pencil that we used on you was also brown. I know you mentioned before you've been afraid of using blacks. Yeah. Were you told in the past that like you can't use? It makes you look aged or like a crib keeper. Oh, Looks really? Like... Well, then I must be a <laughs> crib keeper because you're black not. is all I wear. <laughs> no, you're not. But I would very much disagree with that. I would even go so far to say that anyone can rock black, but only if you have very light skin and hair is brown the best option. But that's just my opinion. Makeup can be used in all different ways. There's no hard lines of saying yes or no. But you know. However, I think you can pull off both because okay. you're very blonde, so you can pull off doing browns. Okay. However, I also think black would look amazing on okay. you. It would just bring more attention to that area, which okay. I don't know if you want tons of Why attention. Why not? But I think you could pull it off. Okay. This is a very, very, very dark brown, so it might even come up cross as being like a black. Okay. But let's go in and and see what it's okay, like. Okay, go for it. To find your perfect line, you're gonna go in the same line that your lower lash line is angling upward. That's the line you wanna do for your cat eye. Just did the tiniest little flick. I feel like I wanna do it even a little more. I'm going crazy. I know, I'm not going too crazy. <laughs> so next I'm going to curl your lashes. You said you don't usually curl your lashes ever, ever. Mm. Have you ever? Curl your lashes? Like three times. Oh. Maybe I will now. We're not going to go too ham. I like going a couple squeezes near the base. Let me know if anything pinches. But you already have really beautiful curly looking lashes. So, so. does it last all day? Depending on the mascara you use. Oops, I did not know that. I feel like curling your lashes works really well whatever age you are. It just opens up the eyes okay. a lot. And then I'm gonna go in with a mascara again. I like using black. We're gonna use the two face better than sex because this has a lot of volume. And I need a lot of volume. I just wiggle and then pull. You're very good at not moving. Moving, yeah, my goodness. We can do a staring contest after. You would probably win. I'm terrible <laughs> at not blinking. Oh, I feel like you're gonna like this look. Okay. You're gonna look at this and then say, we I never needed false eyelashes. We have to go somewhere. So pretty. Yeah, and I'm excited. I wish I had lashes like yours. Oh dear. There's not a whole lot of them there. Okay, so she said she likes having a little bit of mascara on your lower lashes. We're not gonna go too crazy. So we're going to put a little bit of mascara on it. I'm gonna rub off the excess because I don't want any extra goopy bits. I don't want this to be too thick, but I do want to just give you a little bit of extra flair. And one little trick is if you end up getting mascara on on your skin, just wait until it dries versus try and get when it's wet and it'll smudge all over. Once it dries, you can just scratch it off. It'll just flake off instead. I'm using this little Q-tip underneath her lashes so that it doesn't hit her skin as much. Next, we're going to move on to eyebrows. And this is an interesting point because I feel like with eyebrows, we tend to go and stick to what we first learned and then never progress beyond that with our eyebrow shapes. And sometimes that means what was popular when we were in high school or college, the time that we were in the prime of our makeup applying days, I find that for today's brow trends to look younger, you do need a little bit more of a fuller brow, maybe a little bit more even all the way through. I find more people in your generation tend to have a little bit of like a thicker part at the front and then it really thins out. So to bring it back to the current trends of makeup and give you a more youthful look, we're going to fill in a little bit more of your brow hairs okay. and then try to make it a little bit more even across. That's okay. That's fine. Because we're doing some fine tuning, I'm using a very fine point brow pencil because we're gonna just draw in sort of individual hairs to try to get that shape going. This is the oh. Dior Show Brow Styler in light brown. Okay. I'm gonna focus on doing just little individual hairs in the shape that I want. Does it feel weird? No, I just wonder what it's gonna look like. I hope you like it. <laughs> what do you feel like was popular? What kind of brow? When I was young, we plucked them really Really fine and thin, yeah. which now the women of my era regret that because they it don't have, grow back. They don't have brows now. Yeah. 
I didn't do that. Mm -hmm. I did a little bit, but I never did it to the extreme that a lot of my friends did. And now I'm glad I didn't. Yes, we'll have to agree with you on that one. I did one thing right. So what you want to be doing is just making little brush strokes in the same direction that the brow hairs actually grow. That will give you the most natural look. And then this has a spoolie on the other end. You can just use that to brush through the hairs, help groom it, and it helps blend everything together. And two part of aging is the end of your brows get thinner and finer. Mm -hmm. And so I guess with loss of estrogen that happens. If you look That's old. brow pencils are for. Yeah. We could just a lot of old older ladies have a tail missing. They lose their tail. <laughs> I like the lizard. <laughs> it's okay. We can make it grow right back. <laughs> you have a really pretty natural brow shape. Oh, well, that's very nice. Thank you. Where do you think Ben got his brows from? Oh, uh, his father. Yeah? Mm -hmm. They all have very thick brows, like, but they're not too bad. They're not too out of control manly brows. I like big, bushy, out of control manly brows. <laughs> You can always pull it back and tame them, but you can't make sparse brows grow, you That's know? That's right. Well, you can tattoo them, but that looks very fake. I don't, yeah. I'm really not a fan. Yeah, it's a little trickier on men. Yeah, and I haven't used a pencil like that before. I've just used powder. Really? I use well, powder. you know what? Powders will almost give you the exact same look. Okay. You're just doing that Are we ready shape. for me to take a look? Not see? yet. No, we no, didn't wait. do your cheeks at all. Oh, I thought maybe I could look. Oh, that's... I almost want to just let you have a reveal at the end. Oh, that's exciting. Okay, so do you ever use bronzer? Or do you like sticking to blush? I like to use both. So we have this blush palette. That's great. I'm going to use something, again, a little more neutral and warm. I don't want to go too extremely like pink. We're not going to want people having all the attention on your cheeks. Stop traffic. What do you want? Something like this? Just like the neutral one? Yeah, that was my pick as well. Generally for this as well, I don't like doing too much shimmer. I like something that's a little more satin or matte, just so it won't reflect on any uneven texture on the skin. Okay, so I'm really going to just focus in this oval area right here. And I like using the end of it because I can have more control on where it goes. So I'm just gonna go right here. It's almost like where the cup of your eye is, that's gonna be the center here and then I'm blending it in both directions just blending out so it just gives you a really pretty natural flush right there we're gonna go up and forward I really don't think you need to do like a high contour or anything like that so now let's move on to lips I think this is another huge thing for more mature women is whatever trend was popular when you were younger which I tend to see Tails. a lot of like mauves and really kind of like dark tones when I see older women we wore dark Dark brown. Like a burgundy. Mm -hmm. And I almost feel like that's quite aging. I feel mm. like the more natural you look to yourself, like in your best state, that's going to make you look more youthful. So I'm using NARS Velvet Matte Lip Pencil. It's almost like a pinky medium brown. It should be close to your natural lip color. Nothing too dark. This is just kind of really easy to wear. Oh my gosh, this is so pretty on you. And then we could even almost go, I don't know if you like overlining your lips. One side of my lip hangs unevenly to the other side. I have one side like that too. So I'll over overline it on one side to even out my lips. But I don't do it like crazy. I just like it. And especially because we're not even doing like a lip pencil because this is just more of like a casual look. You can totally pull off having you go all the way to the edges. So I know, you know, women having thinner lips, like that's a big thing that comes up when you age. And so one other thing for your lips to do is to add a little bit of shine. So I like using a lip gloss, but instead of just using only a lip gloss or having it all over everywhere, we can actually focus where the light hits. Okay. But having the extra shine will make your lips look like they have a little bit more volume. So let's just put this in the center of the bottom lip right here and also just sort of in the center of the top lip. So it's just gonna add a little bit of gloss. Here's the big reveal. Okay. Oh, wow. That looks really good. What I would think? have never have thought to use that shade of eyeshadow and my brows don't look fake. Don't your eyes look more green? Yes. With they that color. Do. It's because of the color wheel. The orangey tones are really going to make your green eyes pop. I like it very, very much. <laughs>
So look ha very good. You I, like love they look I love it. I love that. I would have never have picked that color either. I would have thought it looked too rust colored. It looks really good. So this is the final look. It's so beautiful. I, like I think it. you just look radiant and stunning Thank and you. a lot more youthful, even though she already looks youthful and gorgeous to be. But begin I'm not with. youthful. Oh my goodness. No, you look amazing and beautiful. I'm a senior. Doesn't she looks like she used to be a supermodel. I get the discount. You know the senior discount. <laughs> anyway, I really <laughs> hope you guys found this helpful and maybe learned something new. If you did, feel free to subscribe to this channel, hit thumbs up on the video, ring the bell. And ring the notification bell so that you don't miss my future videos coming out. If you want to see my mother-in-law in a video again, leave a little comment down below so back. that we know. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!